see what you can do. Dick Hoyt will pull, pedal, and push his son Rick, who was born without the ability to move or speak. This is how father and son spend their time together, nearly every single weekend, going back 30 years, have completed over 240 triathlons, and on their lazier Sunday afternoons, over 68 marathons, the fastest in a time just half an hour off the world record. Yes, the real world record. They say Dick Hoyt could have been an elite endurance athlete on his own. Dick's not so sure. I just don't have the desire to be out there running by myself. I think it's just something that comes from his body to my body, and it makes us go faster. No hope at all. Just cold, hard facts. He said, but we talked, and we said, no, we're not going to put Rick away. We're going to bring Rick home and bring him up like any other child. Like his father would always planned like any other boy in Boston, on sports. The doctor said it was all well and good, but we're still sure there was little going on in the silent boy's brain. His parents saw reason to disagree. We could tell by looking in his eyes that when you were talking to him, he was looking right at you, and he was taking everything in. It's just that he couldn't answer you, he couldn't get things out. Until a machine was invented that would put Rick to the test. Using a button with his head, the only part of his body he had any control of, 12-year-old Rick would finally get the chance to click out his first words, one letter at a time. And everybody's betting whether the first words Rick is ever going to say. Well, his mom's saying it's going to be, hi, mom, and me saying it's going to be, hi, dad. Well, the Boston Bruins were going for the Stanley Cup, and the very first words he ever said was, go Bruins. So you knew that he was following sport. When I got my first communicating device, the feeling was joyous. Finally, I could share my opinions with everyone. And it was something young Rick would tell his father soon after that would change everything. In 1977, he learned of a benefit run being set up to help a local athlete who'd been paralyzed in an accident. I wanted to show this person that life goes on and he could still lead a productive life. That is why I turned to my dad and said we have to run in this race. Dick Hoyt, 40 years old and out of shape, had never run more than one mile. No one expected him to push his wheelchair-bound son for five. When we came across the finish line, it's the biggest smile you ever saw in your life. Then when we came home from that race, Rick wrote on his computer, Dad, when I'm running, it feels like my disability disappeared. Overnight, Dick and Rick began running every road race New England had to offer. And before too long, the oddball team was leaving quite... Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Hoyt pushing his son. It was his first time on any bike since age six. This was 1989, Hawaii, site of the most grueling endurance race in the world, the Ironman Triathlon, a 2.4-mile ocean swim, followed by 112 miles on a bike, then, for good measure, a full marathon all under the island sun. The world's best were there, including the guy who put the Hoyts up to this ultimate challenge. I could see them coming from a distance, and as they're getting closer and closer, I can tell how Dick was struggling. But then I look down at Rick. He's dealing with all the elements, too. And it takes a lot of strength to say, Dad, um, I, I want to continue. I want to participate. And it took a little while before that realization hit me. And then I realized how much of an incredible athlete Rick is, not just his dad, but Rick truly is. It's a relationship of loyalty and trust. Ultimately, all of Rick's relationships are. But this one's different. Got a nice new haircut, huh? That means we're going to go faster. In his own apartment, helped by part-time caretakers, but fiercely independent. Like any other college grad, yes, it took him nine long years, but Rick managed to become the first ever non-speaking graduate of Boston University. People generally underestimate me due to my physical condition, but I am a person with a brain and intelligence. 
I am no different than anyone else other than the fact that I will not beat you in a foot race and you will never have to tell me who shut my mouth. <laughs> For Dick, hearing Rick's voice is what's inspired him to keep going, 30 years and counting. Rick can't make very many sounds, but he does this a lot when we're out there competing. It's not like a laugh, it's, it's like he's got a smile on his face and he's just making this noise, you know, this loud noise. Is that the prettiest sound in the whole world? <laughs> you know, he's happy and he enjoys himself and he loves to be out there competing. Dick and Rick still race almost every weekend, usually placing first or second in Dick's age group. Only now, they have even more competition on the course. These days, hundreds of families are pushing their own disabled children in races, inspired by the Hoyt's devotion. Are you ready to run? <laughs> huh? You know, I figured eventually people would start doing what we're doing, but I didn't think it would get as big as it is getting. I know how Rick feels when we're out there competing and running, and now this is affecting other families that have children similar to Rick, and they all got big smiles on their faces when they're out there competing and running. The Hoyts are inspiring families without disabled members, too. In 12 cities across the country, volunteer groups have formed to help disabled athletes who don't have a family member to compete with them. At races in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, volunteer pushers are paired with athletes of all ages, and they finish as a team. And just last month in Virginia Beach, more than 100 runners pushed 50 riders in a three-mile race, forming the biggest group yet. These are volunteers who want to push disabled kids. That's what's amazing to me. They're not their mother and father, somebody in the family. It's just volunteers who are out there and they want to do that. This is an email you got um, a couple of years ago. Dear Mr. Hoyt and Ricky, I lost my beloved husband of 25 years four months ago. It has been a pain that I cannot describe. And I saw your video. The day I watched it, I had decided to just end it. And I had everything planned to the last detail. I'm here because of that video. I just wanted you to know that you and Ricky are two of my heroes. Thank you again. The subject heading is, you saved my life. You saved a life. Yeah. Hearing a story like that, it's easy for Dick and Rick to race on. Dick, now 70, says retirement won't happen for two more years after they run their 30th Boston Marathon. But for this father and son, it's doubtful that finish line will be their last. When are you going to know that it's time to stop? Well, I think Rick's going to say, Dad, I've had it, you know, done, or I'm going to say it, or we, something happens, we get injured. All the people in the world are inspiring him to continue running because we've been inspiring them throughout the years. And it's nice to know that he's the one that really started this all back 30 years ago. See what you can do.